So I'll call the meeting to order. Roll call. Kane. Here. Gallops. Here. Sorensen. Here. Lydico. Here. We have a quorum. Approval of agenda. I I move that we accept the agenda as presented. Second. All right. Any public communications and comment? Oh, we need a vote. Vote. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Just move it along. All right. All in favor of approving the agenda as is? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Now, uh, public communications and comment. Have anyone? Oh. None. Okay. All right. Um, approve the meeting minutes from our June 22nd meeting. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All right. All those uh, in favor of approving June's meeting minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. That is approved. All right. Discussion items. First, the sewer system cleaning and televising proposals. So I can just stay here and go up there. <clears throat> Do you want me to start, Jerry? Well, I, can I, well, you I, can start. You I can you? start. Okay. I guess uh, we put out a request for proposals a few weeks ago um, for sewer cleaning and televising for a quarter, about a quarter of the uh, city's sanitary sewer system. Um, we received three proposals back, and we also had one company <coughs> deny submitting a, pr a proposal due to their own schedule. Um, this work is needed quite terribly. Um, emergency backup calls are becoming more frequent and expensive. Normally planned sewer cleaning should take place every year and rotate sections of the city on a four to six year basis. And this hasn't happened in Ripon since 2019. Um, and then since then, I guess the sanitary sewer cleaning responsibilities were given to the wastewater facility. Um, as far as the quotes, they vary greatly in price with Speedy Clean having the lowest price per foot <coughs> and I would recommend that we choose their proposal as well. Um, Speedy Clean has, um, or they did conduct the last planned sewer cleaning in 2019 and they've handled most of our emergency backup calls since 2019 as well too. So we've become pretty familiar with the company and their operators and we have found them to be thorough and efficient. That's about it. Why weren't, why, can I ask a question? Why weren't we doing it since 2019? <laughs> I wasn't here. I know you weren't. I just, so, I, because I actually looking at the area that you're proposing and I, I don't, that's not my district, but I get calls from those mm -hmm. people. So I'm just curious. I mean, it's a horrible thing to have your sewer back. So, up. so I'll just, you know, I'll kind of take that from what I understand. You know, we have in the sewer system what's called a CMOM and then a CMAR. Um, so a CMOM is kind of a compliance, maintenance, and operations manual. And then the CMAR, the council just passed, and that just score, sort of scores you and gives you your, your, um, your operations of the sewer system for the year. Um, this is a built-in requirement to the, any CMA. We're supposed to be cleaning our systems. Um, the city does not have capabilities of televising. That is something that we added to the proposal, a clean and televise. So the televising component of this, in speaking with Jeremy, um, in, in his conversations with DNR staff members, you know, there was a time where the city did do cleaning. Uh, DPW was doing it. Um, they forwarded it over to, to um, to public or public works forwarded or Mike did forward it over to sewer. Uh, sewer then sort of said we're not going to do it, but and it just kind of sat there, frankly. And the only time things are getting done is when there is a backup. Um, we need to be far more proactive based on our CMOM and CMAR, as well as the televising component of this. We would like to televise the entire system over the next four years to determine conditions of sanitary sewer lines throughout the community. The goal and the, uh, the, the, the ultimate goal would be to take that, that viewing of that camera piece and, and installing it into GIS mm -hmm. um, to like be able to view actually your sewer line, the condition of it, right as you are you know, looking at a map. Uh, that's pretty high level, but that would be the goal. But ultimately then using the televised reports to um, determine if there are areas of, of mm -hmm. you know, I and I, 
there's tons of I and I that comes in. Are there cracked pipes? Um, you know, uh, areas where there are dips, areas where the clay tile is broken, mm -hmm. uh, roots, all of that stuff. We need to know uh, what the condition of our, our sanitary sewer is. So the televising component of this was really where I stepped in and said, Jeremy, yeah, we can clean, but we also need to televise. And that's something we're not capable of doing. Um, but yes, I mean, you can speak more, Mike and Jeremy, about what happened, but it's kind of water off water down it the is. drain I at this point. Yeah. I don't think that, and Chris, you would know a little more of the history, um, even before me, I don't think that we really made our way around the city as we should. Would you say that? It was a couple years when I first started here, and pretty much you rushed and were trying to get a couple of stuff. But I don't think we... There was also, I guess, planned cleanings prior to that. The last one was in 2019, I guess, um, and data going back from there. But so, so, so the overall system, we need to do a better job. But this speaks to our overall infrastructure and in, in catching up. We're catching up with all infrastructure. Catching up, um, types of equipment, um, just dated, um, very difficult. Um, you know, quite honestly, when uh, Travis stopped <coughs> That sewer portion budget was under Travis Drake. I felt that it needed to be realigned mm -hmm. uh, back to, unfortunately, it wasn't me at the time. Back to okay. Chris Lavers, um, and it it just didn't get done. I provided. Uh, um, I don't even know what you provided him with. Nothing was really zones happened. that really needed to be done. Yeah, I think the so, problem problem is people don't realize that infrastructure is more than just roads. Yes. And our water delivery system is significant infrastructure. So, and disposal. Yep. yep. So um, that's kind of what happened there. And, and, and frankly, we're just, with, with the sewer department, with some of these overwhelming challenges, one of the things I've talked to Jeremy about, and Mike, on some of all of these infrastructure issues, is just getting back to very basic stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cleaning and televising is a very basic thing, but it provides a ton of information and benefit to the overall system. So getting back to this was very important and we didn't we didn't budget for this. That's why it's here. Mm -hmm. There is there is room in the sanitary sewer budget because we didn't do sanitary sewer projects this year. We didn't spend about $150,000 like we had budgeted for in certain areas uh, like on South Douglas we were thinking about doing some sanitary sewer. We didn't do any of that. Uh, there's a couple other areas that we haven't, um, hasn't panned out the way we wanted to. So this became kind of an, an easy uh, replacement project or goal that we will then continue to budget for in the coming years to finish out the system in the next four or five years and then use that data to and information to make better decisions. But this is at the very basic level what we need to be doing um, whether it's our own staff or, or contracting. Um, maybe someday we get back to doing it ourselves, I don't know, but from a televising standpoint, we need a contractor, because that is, I don't know how much money for televising equipment, but. I don't even want to guess. <laughs> Put a little robot expensive. down. Some, sometimes it's just fine to have, a, a, to outsource and have a third party come in and do it, because frankly, I don't think we can do everything. Mm -hmm. No, I would agree with you on that. I would, I would think this company coming in with a full crew of guys would be able to do it in about a week or two. And to have operators do that as a staff, along with all their other doings, would take months just to do a small portion of the city. So, and then are we planning to rotate? Because you've got this area for televising, and then are you going to select, like, grid it off and select different mm -hmm. areas? That this one I would say is the highest concern because this, this is where I'm getting calls from. It's not my district. <laughs> is that over, like, over by John Street and stuff? Am I looking at this correctly? Sort of. It's over by Thomas Street. Yeah. It's down Watts. It's south side yeah. of the city. Okay. It's like the south, yeah, southwest side. Because mm. I know I've gotten. And Mike, maybe you can help out here. Um, I can't think off the top of my head who it is right now, but there's a gentleman that's had concerns over the years about the standing water on John Street. Yep. Is that is that related to this or no? Um, do we have lift stations in that area? Do we have lift There are stations? a couple lift stations in there. Because if the lift stations fails, then you um, have that. 
I've looked at that particular area in the last year or so and okay. have not seen uh, that issue like it's been in the past. Okay, I haven't heard anything. I don't know if that's related to the work I did on the Sandmar okay. ditch line. Uh, but I can tell you that the water gets out there faster, out of there faster, okay. which reduces that water table. Okay. I don't know if it extends way over into John and Carroll. Okay. I, I can't see under that, right. but I've noticed a reduction in there. I don't know if it's because things are drier. Um, and I know in the John Street, from what I know, is we did um, some coating, epoxy coating inside uh, those um, drains, sewer drains and things there. That's kind of where their water was going, the okay. ionine into there, so that's maybe why it's not able to get out now okay. and it's sitting at their house. Okay. I guess that water shouldn't be going into the sewer. Anyway. You're right, it shouldn't yeah. be. <laughs> so it, uh, doing this encapsulating uh, and stopping the INI is going to affect it affect something else. Okay. So we have Adam and I have talked about that area. Too. Okay. Yep. So oh, has Speedy done a field inspection? <coughs> Excuse me, what was that? Have they done a, a field inspection? You know what they might be dealing with? Um, I guess they're pretty familiar with our system in the first place. Um, they did the yeah last one in 2019 and all of our backups anyway. So. I mean, what if they went down a hole and said, you got an imminent collapse here of 100 feet or something? No, that's probably unlikely, but they're going to say our proposal can't cover that because we can't fix it. Well, they wouldn't be fixing it. They would just be reporting that information back to us, and then we would have to go about fixing it. I thought they're talking in here about fixing things. I guess it was indeed. Okay. The pre qualification question and answers? It says they're fixing things, doesn't it? Fall and cutter track. Cuts things away. See, PP trucks to repair. I guess I think that's just listing the equipment that they have. We weren't intending on them performing repairs after the cleaning in the first place. Or unless they break right away, something. Unless it's <laughs> unless we need to. Okay. So we do the repair. Either that or be a separate. Um, party. Yeah. So generally, how it works is they'll they'll you know they'll go through they'll do everything and they'll ha they'll have a person in a little trailer with a camera after they clean everything make sure it's all nice and ready to go they'll send a camera down there and they'll they'll literally uh, from a footage standpoint start okay we're starting here they ping it and they go and now if all of a sudden there's a collapse or there's a root or something they'll they'll take a video of it quick they'll ping it and they'll mark it down and then they'll keep going. And as they keep going, they'll everything they see, if they see a lateral, they'll say lateral this way. You know, and then you, you basically get a report that says, you know, at 100 feet on this line, you have a collapse. Or, you know, what, whatever. Everything gets documented. Condition, all of it. <coughs> um, you'll be able to see areas where there may be backups or grease or, or air problem areas where there are dips that they say, well, now all of a sudden we need to, you should probably be cleaning that every year or it needs to be replaced. Um, the goal is to just, you know, use that information then and see where there are big sections or areas that need complete reconstructions done. Uh, but yeah, we fully intend to probably find some collapses in in this um, process um, throughout the system because a lot of the stuff is all old. Um, so, uh, and then we, it's our job to take that information and find projects and fix them. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't talked too much about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you, step? what do you, what do we do here? We we would just be looking for a recommendation to the Common Council uh, to pick a proposal and and have it approved to get this done this year. Okay, so you're that's what you're asking for. Yeah. And the staff proposal is the speedy, speedy clean. clean? Mm -hmm. Recommended. Yeah, the other two proposals, one was a hundred and some thousand, and the other one probably was a company from just taking a flyer on it, trying to get rich <laughs> at 238 grand. I think oh. It did get posted, and I guess various websites that do advertise proposals as well, too. So that's where the one company must have picked it up. 
They're going to do 56,000 feet. Roughly, yeah. So about how many linear feet do we have in this city? We have 40.8 miles. So whatever that math is. So percentage wide, it's, rough it's percentage. It's about a quarter. It's about, about a quarter. quarter. Yep. So we're going to do this this year, and every year you're going to budget from now on, and we're going to do four, and then do we have to, the fifth year, do we come back and redo this? That would be the intention. Um, we may decide not to televise it um, because it's been free, or I guess done recently. Um, so then I guess that clean would be cheaper if we're not televising as well. Right. Too. The, the, the um, general might, schedule, I think, just talking to Jeremy, would be tell, we need to televise because we haven't televised for a long time right. in a lot of areas. But once so you got the four once years. Once you hit that, yep, four years. years. Year five, we'll be back to zone one. We'll just do cleaning. And then year eight or nine, we'll probably be back to televising again because okay. just to see if there's any worse areas or anything like that. So every cycle, that's the practice that yep. should be sort of followed is every other. Because you can kind of pick and choose too. I mean, if you got some weak areas, you'll know you might want to televise it within four years. Right. So the other thing, you're going to get all this information, right? You will have, will own. Yes. All the video. Okay. Yep. They will send us a flash drive with all the video, and then also a full report that kind of it shows each pipe or each section of pipe, and then also where like the I guess faults in the pipe might be. Okay. It's a pretty detailed report that we'll end up with. And Adam, just question you had mentioned about GIS. Is this something that can be imported into our GIS system? Um, so we'll be able to, the, the video and that would like be that. the ultimate goal. It gets a little hard just because of the data or the amount of, of space. information and space. You're you're you know you're putting a lot of information out there then, um, but ultimately that is. That is the, from a staff perspective, you know, that is awesome because you can, if you yeah. if you can go back and say, yep, at this time we recorded this and this is the condition of the pipe, that that's awesome. I mean, that's useful. So, Madam Chair, may I make a motion to accept the speedy clean proposal as recommended by city staff and refer to city council for action? Absolutely. Is there a second? Okie dokie. Second it. All right, any further discussion? All right, all those in favor of approving this to move on to common council? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds like exciting video. Yeah, they're pretty cool. This will be the TikTok video. Once, yeah. you've seen, once you've seen one, you've seen them all. Oh. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, on to garbage routing and collection on private property. So I kind of been talking about the routing of the garbage truck and, and standardizing that process um, because what we found was each driver kind of had its own little tweak on where the truck went, when it went, and how it went. So I think standardizing, getting a baseline on um, how we want it routed, also looking for any uh, safety concerns throughout the process, and doing the best we can to eliminate those. So um, I cast that with Chris here, new ones, our supervisor. Um, and the reason I did that is he was the ops manager for advanced disposal for 21 years. So we're going to utilize his expertise, um, if he can remember it. Um, and he's going to talk about that a little bit and uh, what we found and how we implemented uh, uh, the five-day is that where we just turn right all the time? <laughs> I don't even have to explain it. <laughs> See, I listen in right, meetings. So. <laughs> no, that, that is the experience from where I was before on safety. Safety was the biggest thing I had there. So you got stuff thrown down to you all the time. Uh, where did you say about the safety? So yes, I did take and do most right hand turns on all the routes that we had, routed them. Had the guys look at them. Uh, the one on the garbage right now is running them the way the maps are. 
and I have another one training on it. So um, it took away roughly eight to twelve turnarounds, meaning in intersections, out of the picture, and now you go around right hand circles to eliminate hopefully accidents. So and that was per day. Per day. So eight forty wow. incidents that could have been an issue. Oh. Or what issue would have happened? Turning around the intersection of the big garbage truck. Oh. That's how they used to do it. Now I got them going around in circles to eliminate that. So this is just an operational report, right? This is. is it, yeah, there's one thing toward the end here we'll talk about. Yeah. That, that's cool. You don't so, need a motion to turn right. <laughs> <laughs> so, don't get me wrong there. I'm going to turn left. Huh? No, that's kind of big. I'm going to turn left. I'm going to hey, Chris, you turn left. <laughs> the other thing that came out of this, Chris brought to me that, you know, um, when waste management, GFL, the, these these companies come in, you don't mean to eliminate you here, um, eliminate they're signing a contract with um, the business, okay? In that contract, it says, we're not liable for any damage to your property if we drive onto your property. I think it was a good point. I brought it to Adam. I said, uh, you know, this is something we need to look at to protect the city because we are entering um, private areas and the truck is now bigger, it's heavier, has more wheels, um, and these driveways, these parking lots are not four inches thick in asphalt. There's something around two. So we brought it to Adam and he's going to speak <coughs> on, um, where it went from there. Yeah, so um, so it's been kind of a three-pronged approach here. There's been a couple things, you know, obviously the routing, uh, just for efficiency from a safety perspective, um, the routing has helped. Uh, and then it all kind of came to a head a few weeks back where our garbage truck was hit doing an unsafe move on the state highway, trying to get into private property, basically backing into private property on a state highway. And, um, and it just all kind of, became very clear that that this is not what we should be doing. So um, so I brought Mike brought forward this idea of, of we're, we're entering you know private property and the liability too, not just the safety but the liability. So um, we talked over it a few more times. Um, I brought it forward to Attorney Wirtz and he drafted an indemnification agreement in your packet. Mm -hmm. uh, if nothing else, we're just looking for approval of that indemnification agreement uh, as we make some of these changes from this committee. Because what we have set out to do now is I've requested that the uh, operations review the areas we enter private property. That number to begin with was 85 areas that we enter private property to collect garbage. We are looking at that and saying of those areas, which ones can we avoid going onto private property? So phase one of this is identifying the number, identifying which we do not need to enter, sending them then a letter stating, please move your can to the curbside for collection days. Now, some of these areas are businesses. They have 350 galloners. We can't just tell somebody, you know, move it to the curb. So we are going to continue to have to, to, to enter private property to collect garbage, which is which is fine, um, but we're trying to avoid that. I mean, there are areas we go to get 190 gallon can on, you know, and it, it easily could be wheeled to the to the curb. So uh, we've gone through some of this process already, um, but the goal is to then minimize the number of private property entrances and send this agreement to every one of those and have them sign it to indemnify the city or hold us harmless from any private property damage when we're collecting garbage on their property. The alternative is they move it, to, if they say no, they can move it to the curbside or they can select other garbage service. But this will get to that point where um, we simply cannot be <coughs> taking this vehicle um, or any vehicle of this nature on private property with that liability because there are pavement concerns, there's we safety concerns, so on and so forth. Um, so the driver wasn't hurt when the truck neither. was hit. 
No. No, there was. Okay, good. So that is why it's in front of you. It's kind of a three-pronged approach in terms of efficiency, liability, and safety. Uh, so we're just asking that the, you know, hold harmless agreement at least be approved, and then we'll unroll or um, un kind of unpack this over time here. Uh, we don't want to just send out massive, massive, you know, 80 people here change how you're doing this because we don't want to deal with 80 phone calls, but. Um, we do need some buy-in or, or some guidance as well because uh, this is going to be a change for some people, um, not meant to be anything other than address the three concerns that um, I mentioned previously, efficiency, safety, and liability. So, I would so move the hold R on the list and indemnification agreements. Second. Right. You two are doing it all tonight. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Are we okay at the bank? I think yours is, you have a 90. I think we're gonna propose a move to the curb. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Just gotta figure something out, because in the winter, I mean, you know, summertime. Yep, and, and we're, we need to work with uh, <clears throat> whoever it is uh, to make sure it's right today. For example. Um, I'm not sure we need a 90, though. I, I gotta find that. For example, today, um, and I didn't know this, is we drive uh, the garbage truck um, on a one-way down Blossom. So we'll go down the hill from Ransom to Blossom, um, which we didn't, I didn't know. Um, so we worked with the individual in, I think, 309 Ransom uh, to just put it across the street, and that's where they put the recycling anyways. Okay. So um, now we'll be going correct on that one way, uh, you know, some simple <clears throat> things like that. Um, so, um, and, and <laughs> it seems simple, um, but you kind of got to look at all the processes and where we're going and you know, we find stuff sometimes. That's a small street for that big truck. Holy smokes. I've made people, when I'm going up to ransom, I've made people who are coming down back up. Back up. And it's signed. It is signed, yeah. It is signed, because I drive up to the top and I'm like, where's the sign? And it, it's there. So, we'll keep adjusting that and work with the people on uh, what we need to do to work through this process. All right, any other comments on the um, Rerouting of the garbage. Okay, moving on to the garbage truck project. Um, hold on one second. What is going on here? I have lost control. <laughs> Were you here when we loaned the signs from drug-free communities that say on your garbage trucks that say, "This is what's in meth." What? <laughs> this is what's in meth. Garbage is in that? Yeah, just about everything you throw in there. I, I remember that, but I don't remember if it was here or where I used to work. Well, it was in Fond du Lac. I had the big ones in Fond du Lac, and I had some smaller ones that we loaned to rip in. Where did you used to work? It's a different county, so I don't, I don't know. But people, no, it, it, was, it was pretty eye-catching. They're big magnet things that you just stick on the side of the Oh, the truck isn't this working. <coughs> I could find them. Would you do it again? I want to hear garbage. We're, we're, okay. well, we're looking for something to go on this. Well, this is pretty. <laughs> it's more positive, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know why this isn't working. User error. Yeah, there's something going on here. I don't know why. Uh, so in your packet, you did have a um, uh, kind of a small example of the um, the garbage truck. Um, there's a space on the side, and, and then there's two examples. I was going to kind of show more examples. Um, Mike and I, when we first got the um, garbage truck, they had a little contest and talked about naming it, and, and it's been since named. Um, but then every time, it's just 
drives by, it seems like it's not complete quite yet. Like it's just a big red truck, it's and that's <laughs> that you know the side. And then actually, Jeff um, had called and we were talking, and and he had just mentioned kind of briefly about an idea he had at one point about putting a, you know a logo or something on the side of a, a garbage truck. Um, so basically, what we have is we had many months ago. Um, gone to um, Blue Designs as well as Graphic Signs to, to get an idea of, of you know what it would cost to wrap the truck and it was under two thousand dollars anywhere from you know fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred all in to wrap the truck with something um, branded or something unique. Um, just kind of getting a feel for if this is something you want us to continue to pursue um, if you would like us to work with both or one, come up with designs, have a vote, um, or bring it back to the committee with choices, or what do you want to do with it? Because um, there's, it can literally be anything. Um, it, it it just it literally can become most anything. Like on the side of it, they can do doesn't have to be. They can do wild things. Yep. I mean, they just crazy. They, they can do anything mm -hmm. on the side of it. So um, we were just thinking about how that works and if it's if it's worth pursuing. It might be interesting to have a contest. Yeah, a citywide contest. Yes. Get people engaged in it because they were very engaged in the uh, the naming of the vessel. I'm disappointed in my name. Amen of what? The oh. <laughs> we named it Bart. <clears throat> you don't spell that out though. It's an accurate. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brief. Okay. An accurately named. Yes, thank you. I think yeah, I think it's a fun opportunity to I mean I'm sure some people will have some interesting well, I'm, I asked for a meth sign. So. You did just ask for a meth sign. Um, <laughs> I do appreciate that, though. I see where you're well, going. You know, mm -hmm. it makes people think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I think there are a lot of people who would have ideas about what. I, that I think it's a great thing because yeah. you can it, city pride and engage people in it. Have a contest and pick four winners, and then yeah, let submit people designs, vote and then have whatever. a vote. Yeah, democracy. Yeah, it's an election season this fall. Why is they it? did have fun with the naming of the truck? Yeah, just think of the fun they'd have with the uh, oh my god, <laughs> the graphics on it. Adam's got it. ATVs and chickens. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think it would be a really fun idea. I think it would be. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, a great way to, you know, even like Girl Scout groups or whatever, you know? Yeah. And it's a very unique opportunity. It's not often in life you get an opportunity a new to, garbage design, truck. <laughs> to design a garbage truck. <laughs> Put it on the website. Yep. And of ideas you get. Okay. So we will do a garbage truck either picture or design contest to see how we wrap it. Mm -hmm. Pitch your trash ideas. <laughs> okay. You could form a subcommittee. Winning <laughs> design can get a new garbage can. <laughs> we'll spray paint it gold. <laughs> I can. We, we just we wanted to see if it was something everybody's interested in, and it's gonna have, you know, it'll be two thousand bucks by the time it's all said and done, I bet. But um, supporting local business. But yeah, I mean, we just um, we'll price it out once we get a design done, and um, see if anybody's got a cool picture or idea that we can, you know, we engage the public with and have them submit something. And I know, yeah, we've done similar things with. The, the PD has done some similar stuff, so um, we'll do that, and then we maybe bring a couple of them to a, a vote and see what the people want. Okay, well, we'll proceed with that and try to do something fun for once. <laughs> oh, televising the water thing is pretty fun. Televising sewers is really fun. All right. <laughs> I'll show the video. Any other comments on the design project? Don't need a motion or anything. 
No. All right, facility master planning update. I, I can't show you the picture, so um, I, we, I can come back to that later if you'd like, if I can get this to work. Okay. But it's been moving forward. Um, um, so SEH has been meeting about bi-weekly with staff and, and has been, have been going over plans and whatnot. Um, and um, um, we hope to have things sort of wrapped up here in the coming weeks uh, for presentation to the council. Uh, on this facility and then public works. Um, I'll show you a picture if I get it loaded here later. All right. Utility pole ordinance. This is Jeff's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, wait, I'm waiting for that uh, chainsaw and start knocking these things out. <laughs> you tailgate for it, just sit out there. I'm shaking my truck to. Uh, so, based on previous conversations, uh, we had talked about um, a few times since in the last year or so about the, the double utility poles and things not being taken down. So I, I asked uh, Attorney Wirtz to look into what could, could be done uh, in, in ordinance to compel the removal of utility poles and when they're abandoned or no longer necessary. Um, so we actually do have a ordinance existing regarding uh, poles and wire apparatuses 15.32.050 uh, that that you know says you're not allowed to have these without resolution or consent from the common council. So what it doesn't say is section C basically that you know after a utility has um, erected something or by resolution gotten permission to do so and has abandoned another improvement, they must take that down. So um, so I think in a lot of cases, um, what has happened here is there's probably not been proper authorization to begin with on this because there still has always been a requirement that either via resolution or an outstanding easement that a utility can use the right of way to construct or put up poles. Um, a lot of times, sometimes they just come into town and do it. We, we I mean, I, I haven't been here since they've been done, but you know, they just schedule it and it, they maybe get a right of way permit. They're not coming to the council. They're not coming with an easement. There may be an easement hanging out there from 50 years ago from the utility or something that says they have permission to do this, that they're using this under. But um, we don't always know, and and you know, if they have our consent or they have an easement, that's one thing. But without that, um, they you know we need to a first get them to do it, and then when they do that, get them to take down what they're not going to use anymore. So what this essentially does is by adding C, is if we go to a utility and say we think that you own this pole. And they say, yeah, we do own it. Okay, well, where's your easement? Or where's your resolution stating you have authorization to be there? And they say, we don't have it. And we say, well, what are you using that pole for? And they say, nothing. Get it out, please. That's, that's how we would approach this now. And getting ahead of it when people come to us and say, we want to put redo poles, we can show you now have to get rid of the old one moving forward. So this could be used in two ways, mostly moving forward, but going backwards, um, we could contact the utility, say we have a cleaned up ordinance that says you're supposed to abandon these things. So you're not using them anymore and you don't have an easement, you didn't get proper consent to be there. We expect you to get rid of these things. They may say, well, we don't own them. We don't want them. You know, but <laughs> then we'll have to decide what happens. But um, it just is, I think, a way to address the concerns that were brought forward. It may not be the perfect way to do it, I don't know, <laughs> but it's probably better than what was in place before. So that's sort of the summary of it. So as, if I can ask on C, no, I like what we're trying to do here, but again, if, let's just make up the players. We don't know for sure who they are, but. Let's say it is a lion, like in the case of Oshkosh, they came along, put bigger poles up, stronger, newer, whatever reason, and they they did abandon all these, someone there told me, 
the others, but they said we can't cause the other ones who are on those poles to get on to our new ones. They can do what they want, but if they, but if we file for abandonment, then it becomes their responsibility. They assume ownership of the pole. The question I guess I would have is, it, whoever granted Power Light the right in the first place to let them jump onto their poles? I mean, is that Eastman say we can have anybody we want? And invite them onto our pool. And that would have to be looked at in the easement. I mean, and frankly, probably not. I mean, it, it, there's one owner of the easement, likely, or one holder of the easement, and it's probably Wisconsin Power and Light. And anybody else that's on it shouldn't, you know, if they now own the pool then, and they got to take care of it. Um, you know, and I think we'd work with those other players, whether it's, you know, Charter or Spectrum or anything like that. Um, but it, it, it it's a tough one because we're we're going we could be going back years and years and years right like and yeah so if there's a co-location there could also be that could also be a revenue generator for the person who holds the easement they don't share out of the goodness of their hearts so somebody may still be even paying them for that duplicate pull and they and, and they may have also said well we're we're done okay and we've abandoned it. We told them to get off. This may finally compel them right. to to get rid of it or get the others to move because now we're telling them, you're not using it anymore. Um, please get rid of it. And so. So who polices it though? Who? Mike. <laughs> I, 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 the whole issue in my mind is if you did this all over the city, and that's just how it always is. We're going to look like Gary, Indiana in the 70s. Okay. But um, but this was, they just did a bunch of polls on Oshkosh and Hamburg. And, mm -hmm. and then, mm -hmm. oh, let's, who cares? Let's let's not finish the job here. It's, it's one big part of the city that they looks very ugly. You know, the minimum level of professional decorum is not on those streets. And I guess that's part of the thing. If you can do it pretty well in other places in town. Why did you do it this way now? And... And I don't know what line, if they're sitting in the room right now, what they would say. They said, we put up new poles, we can't handle it, we can't control what the fire sites are on the other poles, you know. Answer I probably got, if I remember correctly, is I think it's CenturyLink that is on those poles. They'll move them when they feel like it. So it's not a high priority. So making it a high priority with this might move it down the road. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that while well, we issued a right-of-way permit for them ah. to work in the right-of-way, got it. Maybe more questions should be asked mm -hmm. of them of what we're doing. What are you doing in the right-of-way? You're putting in a new pole. What about the old pole? Um, so, you know, probably could be asking those questions. Sure. Well, one problem when they put utility electrical utility puts the new pole in and then spectrum stays on the old pole that's leaning like this it's according to this they don't have to do a thing because it's still being used there there should be something in here stating that when a new pole is put up and it's a safety the whole reason they did it was because the for pole is deteriorated yes so if there's a new pole there, we should have an ordinance stating that when you put a new pole, that the utilities have to attach to it and remove the old pole within so much time, and then the problem goes away. Because okay. right now, if you go to the electrical company, all they're gonna say is, Spectrum's still on the other pole, we can't move it. Mm -hmm. You're right. So until that's put in here. But it, but it it may come down to easements and ownership at that point too. And if Spectrum, if, issue. if Spectrum, but I don't, if Spectrum doesn't hold an easement and doesn't own, and now owns the pole, they don't have permission to be there. You well, know? I, I, I think the utility, I mean, you can check, but I believe the electrical utility puts the poles in, which is why, and they're on the top. Mm -hmm. And then underneath yeah. the lower, the low voltage things, mm -hmm. you know, 
telephone, cable, whatever it is put underneath, and they, I believe they pay the utility company something to mm -hmm. use their poles. Well, so uh, they're not going to move them and, until you tell them you, that pole needs to be abandoned for safety reasons. And I mean, you're going to have to threaten to find them. And I don't know how far we can go with it. So that was the yeah. only thing is just, you know, how far can we go determining something is either a, a nuisance or a safety issue or a blight, you know, without overstepping something that right. we may we may not want to overstep. Um, but it's something I can certainly take back. We don't want the pole to fall down either, though. And the whole reason the uh, electrical utility put a new pole up is because that pole was not deemed safe enough to use. And, and, I, and the other thing I thought about, and not to get too far into the legal weeds, and that's Lud's job, but you know, is there adverse possession here by the, those, by the, not Alliant, but the others who would say, well, we've been open and notoriously using this for 20 years, you can't pull us off the pole. But I think maybe you could because you could say, but it was never your pole in the first place. It was always Alliance. Alliance could file for adverse possession, but that might be very hard for them to do that if they say we put in a new pole for safety reasons. Put up the old one there. So, I mean, I I agree this maybe could use another tooth or two, but maybe we're going down on go for a while and we get, you know, get back up off of it. I don't know. But if, if anything, maybe we're just drawing enough attention to the, the utility companies to do a better job next time you bring new poles in. I don't know. Have we talked to Alliant to say, what do you guys think of this? No. No, no I... And I just wrote that down uh, to maybe question and get some more details from my contact what we have here, because I don't remember everything I was told from before, so. Yeah, and from, from I think, talking to Ludd, and the, the legal perspective of this, tweaking this ordinance with this language may kick off the conversations that need to occur to get some of these things cleaned up and, and, and not go down the road of the other teeth or making something a little bit too aggressive that you know they kick back on and, and you know, either fight or, or say, no, you, can, you, you, can, you don't have the right to do this. Uh, frankly, I don't know if anybody knows if they have a right to be there if they don't have an easement or they didn't get a resolution. We don't know. I mean, we haven't done the title work on a, on the entire Oshkosh tree right away to say, is there an easement hanging out there that Alliant or Wisconsin and Power has going dating back to when they installed it? Or did the state do that? Because the state was, it was a state highway at one point. Like, you know, there's, you know, I think the, we're kind of doing the same, get your stuff off and the onus is on you to prove that you can be there. Right. <laughs> and if they say, hey, we don't want these, we don't own them anymore, well then we have to keep going down the line and, 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 and they, those next people may not have an easement and may not have the right to be there and may be then forced to move and take those down. So, you know, and, and it, it gets tricky at times, but this was meant to just start the conversation, I think, without going too aggressive. But we can certainly do more. Well, when I asked the question at Alliant a couple of years ago, they said that the polls, they were going to file for abandonment merely because of what I suggested now, whatever they did it, whether they did it or not, I don't know. But you might ask them the question, did you abandon them? Okay, because then the direction you go might be a little clearer. So if you want to see this rewritten or put something else in it, I can certainly do that. Um, take the comments and see if we can do any more. If not, I can have Lud come to another meeting and talk about it and um, see what he would suggest um, in terms of language. Would it help, Mike, if I call Alliant and ask them if they... Um, yeah. If we want to hit them from a couple areas, um, maybe that would be. I, I just would. I think I would just ask them. Who I would you talk to? Proof of a, any uh, anywhere 
that you said you abandoned the post kind of gets Why don't you see what you can find and then I'll work my contacts and see what okay. I can find out on there, okay? And we can report back at the next meeting. Sure. Okay. So we'll be back with that one. Okay. So, sorry, just take a step back. Um, I just wanted to show you kind of the facility master plan. So this is um, kind of a rendering of, of um, a future potential um, site and location and size of, of a public works garage. So this would include, um, we have purchased this lot here on Aspen Street. Um, uh, it's kind of a smaller office, 3,000 square feet, but that's way more than the, um, I don't know what Mike currently has, 900 square feet. Um, so we could share that possibly with the water department, but uh, 10,500 square feet maintenance, 13,500 square feet vehicle storage, then a wash bay and then possible future expansion. All of this would be done with the ability to keep um, keep a, a the current site operational during building. Um, so I just wanted to show you this kind of progress we're making or this is kind of the diagram or the ideas that have been kicked around. This is by no means formal or finalized. Um, I just wanted to kind of give you all an idea of, of what we're thinking. I certainly can share more information about specifics if you're really interested. But like I said, um, this is just more or less like the first time we're showing anything, um, but just showing that there has been a lot of progress in trying to figure out, um, you know, location, size, and scope of, of uh, any project that would occur. That's that. Nothing crazy. And then here we will do this right away right to, oops. This is difficult. I got two screens going. Oh, okay, we're just gonna stop because <laughs> this is ridiculous. They're splitting screens on me. Then we have like, Paul, oh, you <laughs> son of a, okay, we're done. Sorry, Okay. it won't open. Should we move on? Yep, move on, sorry. 2023 capital improvement plan. All right, so Mike and I talked today a little bit. Um, we wanted to kind of just talk about the, you know, things that we're including in the upcoming year's budget um, from capital improvement and then kind of some smaller equipment. Um, so I, I think sort of the, you look at the top, um, not necessarily within this um, committee, but we are looking at um, kind of finishing off the Murray Park Trail and paving it. Uh, finishing up that project in 2023. Um, we then have a plow truck that needs to be replaced. Um, um, just real quick, it's a 1999 Adam. Okay. Not a 98, so it just got a year newer. It's a 95. So it just got older. It just got older, sorry. I thought you told me that. Okay. It's a 95. So we'd be looking at replacing the plow truck. Um, Mike and his team have talked about options there, but overall that's about $175,000, probably more than that at this point spend. What's the timeline on a that? I don't know the timeline. Um, if it's budgeted, um, we can start specking it out and see where they're at. Um, I don't even know what the number will be, to be honest with yeah. you. I just put a number out there based on our past number, and I... I didn't want to get the vendors all worked up. <laughs> it could take some time. Yeah, because it's there's a delay on these, yeah. these things. Okay. Yeah. So and and just to be clear, this is these are like we're probably over budget at this point with the overall spend, but these are the things we would like to prioritize and try to, to fit in. So the plow truck, um, there's stoplight 
um, project. So there's we've received a grant, so about twenty to thirty thousand dollars, because we have to come up with ten percent to repair or sorry to replace every um, intersection with a stoplight on. So the state's covering ninety percent. We'll have to then match ten. So we'll put that in the budget. Uh, then we have the Tigard Street Bridge removal and stream bank. Uh, that's about one hundred fifty thousand. Um, we then have State Street Bridge reconstruction and uh, repair, so that would be kind of our major road project for the year, just because the the um, the bridge or the box culvert aspect of that is probably a two hundred fifty thousand dollar ordeal alone. So um, so that would be a priority, and the main reason that is a priority is the bridge inspection that we just um, we just received from MSA on that bridge stated it's it's not good we need to get that addressed it's it has they said a replace in the next two years um so we want to focus on getting that out of there uh so we avoid another tiger street um and then liberty street project from union up to coom right comb coom whatever coom um we have on there that would be another one um frankly that that is just a drainage mess it's a in the road shot and um we'd be talking probably more than one hundred fifty thousand dollars. we we're talking about potential special assessments for curb and gutter because that entire area up there is just i mean everybody staff wise can probably attest the last year with some of the issues up there have been um a significant problem and um the water is just not being managed and it's ruining private property right away and road. Um, so that would be a project that we would like to undertake. All of this doesn't matter if we did say, for example, receive any other state or federal funding for a project that would be prioritized for 2023. Um, so these are our main big projects. It's, it's, Probably, you know, at 920,000 is more than we have, but we will continue to push along and see what we can put in place. Um, we would love to also add a street sweeper. Um, that is a piece of equipment that is nearing or at end of life as well. Um, but that is a very costly piece of equipment. Um, we have asked for a BIL carbon reduction. Um, carbon reduction uh, grant to help with the street sweeper. So if we got it funded at 80-20 split, that would move up on the list as well. Uh, we'd be dumb not to do it if we got the money. Um, so we have that hanging out there. If all of a sudden we have extra funds, we would either put it into additional smaller road projects or try to replace more equipment for the year. Yes. Um, <clears throat> this looks really good. I noticed under notes that yep. you have some notations with regard to funding. Mm -hmm. When I've done these things, I always like to put in a column for funding, whether it's levy or grants or whatever, because not only does it help the elected officials speak to the issue, mm -hmm. if anybody is willing to look at a capital improvement plan, they can see where they're planning Yep. where we're planning to get the funding from. Could we do that? We have a more comprehensive capital improvement plan software that we use that okay. that has that feature in here. I just tried to water you this just out. just did a spreadsheet. I, just, okay. I, took, I took that information, I put it into a spreadsheet, I just downloaded it specific to this just okay. to have like, you know, and, and I tried to put notes there where we had funding or where we didn't. And, um, you know, your, your Tiger and your State Street are going to be those are going to be general fund or borrow um, and then um, or everything else we should be able to fit in um, from the budget or or borrow um, obviously there's other capital needs um, so uh, we can do that more comprehensively in the fit in in the better software we use but um, I just didn't get there with this one we just wanted to get a list of the main things and, and half this stuff Frankly, we're already halfway in. Like we've we've already approved, you know, inspections or we've already improved, you know, engineering. So, you know, we're just kind of continuing on with things that we're already doing, but we got to put money to deliver on the project eventually too. So that's why it's sort of here. Um, Can I ask about yep. the Coombe? Yep. Coombe and Liberty 
obviously I can imagine all the things that could be going wrong up there. But what are you doing with the section where Dartford and West, well, West meets up with Dartford in that, what, 6,800 feet to Liberty. That's gotta be a huge, a lot of the drainage problem. It's gotta be going down that way. I don't know what we were gonna do with that. We, yeah, we didn't define the scope of the area yet, but we would probably go up Dartford toward West because there's a, we'd probably do some changes up there too because there's like a, there's that catch I guess basin. we talked about. Yeah, we did talk about that. Going to West, but we didn't talk about going past West up to the mouse. Um, but we talked about doing some sort of uh, ditch line or drainage um, in that big hill there because that washes out whenever there's a, a drop of rain. And then we put have to go up there with the loader and put it back into the ditch. Um, so, but we weren't going to go past West Street, I don't believe. So how we connect that together, I don't know, Jeff. Um, but we were, I guess, State me, it, our vision was to go and connect from Liberty to Coombe all the way up to where the curb starts, I believe. And then as we turn left there is probably go to that corner on West and then get our water entered into the system on that major hill at this point. And, and I understand finite dollars, you can't do everything, but once you want to get up to where the grade is level? Well, we talked about yeah, that. I th and yeah, we had talked, I mean, $150,000 is, is going to be light. I mean, this could turn out to be a massive project. Um, so we haven't even really... I mean, you're pretty close to level grade at West, but you bought another 60 feet. We're close there, but going up to where it flattens out is is quite a ways. Still um, but, you know, that that's up to Adam how far we want to go and not, how much money is there. <laughs> You're welcome. <Yeah. laughs> well, I, I understand. I mean, there's only so much money you can't do it all, but I... <clears throat> It's a, it's a tough one, it really is, because we could go all the way up to the mouse and, and probably add curb gutter uh, underground and, and you know, um, but the most damage we're seeing right now is on that corner there. And a lot of that water is coming from Coombe and, and just, it's uncontrolled and it's just, it's a disaster. Sure. I mean, so. And I think our engineers will be able to answer that probably better as they start to look at that area up there on where do we go, how far do we go, uh, what what happens when we stop, um, where does the water go from there, you know, um, I, I I can't really without I analyzing that answer that. So I mean that could blow up to be a million dollar project pretty quick frankly, I mean it could, it just, um, maybe not that much but um, we want to at least try to get some attention up there one way or the other. Um, in that area and when we're doing State Street, it sort of makes sense to try to lump in some more. Um, you can then see some smaller equipment capital projects, things that Mike and his team have put together. I don't know, Mike, if you want to talk to any of those. I do, actually. Um, so, you know, I, I guys can, I ask them, ask the crew, you know, what can help us better and, um, uh, right now, uh, you know, skid steer breaker um, for breaking up uh, and doing a lot of the catch basins and manholes would be beneficial. Um, one of our mowers, our zero turn mowers in the parks is, is a 2007. Somewhere's in there, that's going to be needing to be turned over. Um, a boom for the sidewalk tracker, tractor. Um, some safety stuff, uh, some low profile hydraulic jacks, ditching bucket, um, they've been asking for that. Uh, plow blade is pretty well shot on our snow um, equipment there, the leases you've seen. Um, one thing that I, I talked to Adam about is I did an assessment of um, from Union Street West on the highway um, 23. I came up with a couple hundred thousand dollars needed in repairs. Um, so I asked him uh, for five years of $40,000 every year. 
If we don't do that, we're going to end up like East Fond du Lac in five years. So we need to um, start to fix this cement where the heaving is um, and start patching that in, okay? Otherwise, and that's not slated to be rebuilt before 2030, okay? So we need to stick money into that. We get 70 some thousand dollars from um, connecting highway aid that we need to get into there. Last year we expanded our sidewalk maintenance program, doubled it. Um, to try to get around um, and contract asphalt paving, we need to. Uh, we're use this is where we're using the county to come in and pave um, patches within the city that are are failing. Um, they do a great job, um, and so we're going to address some of those areas. So this year we're going to address um, Carroll Street from Griswold to John. There's some areas in there in front of. Uh, uh, Raleigh Peabody's area that are failing, some spots on Union Street. Uh, we're also um, going to address the ramping of our, our bridges. Um, the one down here where the new cement is, um, I forget the street, what's the street of that? Uh, Hamburg, Scott Street, um, those, we need to close that gap up to save our bridges. Okay, the county's going to be doing that along with our water main breaks and some of our patching also. Another one to add to that list before we come Huh? I got another one to add to that or list before they come. Just... Um, and then Adam and I talked the first part of the year about our, our crack sealing program or, or our uh, chip sealing program. Um, we both agree that uh, the first line of defense to the um, fixing the roads is sealing the crack. <coughs> So we took the money out of our chip ceiling and applied it to crack ceiling to do more. Um, the crew did, uh, my crew did in May do crack ceiling. Uh, we did Hermine, Hamburg, and Lawndale. No, Highland. Um, those are completed. The county came in uh, last week and did two days. Um, they did downtown uh, from Town Hill, across by Pastimes, and then over on the other side of the post office, along with, um, they did um, one up in the Highland area, and they started over, they did all of Watson, and they did a down onto Stony Ridge, okay? Um, so they covered a lot of ground on that. And so um, their labor, um, they have five summer help and three full-time people that run that manage that crew. It's about $4,100 a day. Um, our crews, it's about $3,200 a day. But we just don't have that labor. We need six to eight people. Are they still working four tons a week with Friday off? I don't believe they were. Oh, okay. I don't believe they were, because um, mm -hmm. they were they were gone shortly after three, and probably not here till seven thirty ish, something like that. Um, okay. So we, we need to get ahead of this. We haven't done enough of this in the past, and that's why we're continuing that program. Adam, any takes on that? No, I, the small capital stuff, that'll all kind of be folded into the budget, not into the capital side of things, because that'll just continue to be funded. Um, certainly, we would love to put more in, you know, the sidewalk type maintenance programs and, and other asphalt. So we'll see if there's any extra funds that we can kick into those. Uh, but overall, um, from, a, from a pavement maintenance standpoint, um, you know, we're, we're we're trying to, um, you know, maximize that relationship with the county to do a little bit more for us at a, at a pretty decent cost and then free up uh, staff to continue to work on other things um, because we were doing around 35000 a year in chip seals. And so when we suspended that, uh, we kicked it all over to crack filling in sidewalks because chip seal not that they're bad or anything, it's just by the time you're doing a chip seal on a road, uh, if you didn't already crack fill it or fix some of the other issues there, you're just 
putting a really small band-aid on a problem that's going to show right back up in a couple of years. So um, overall, uh, we're pretty comfortable in getting all the other stuff in the small equipment in the budget pretty pretty easily, just based on year to year. And uh, if there's any more money left over, we can certainly reprioritize and add. So that's a general, you know, capital and small equipment work for the year that we're planning. So, so, so all the incisions in the road around town for water main breaks or you're cleaning up around manhole covers, when does that all get fixed? Uh, that should get done before the um, asphalt plant closes. I've talked to the county and I would expect that in the next month or so. So that's a county job then? We are going to come in and do all of that along with uh, some smaller stretches of patching that we talked about. So the county, we used to just use Northeast for patches, right? Northeast asphalt. Say that again. We used to use Northeast for patching. Um, we never really did um, road patches. Um, we used to use some of Northeast for that. Or if there wasn't a lot, we would use our, my crew for that. Yeah. But I can explain a little bit where our crew has been focused this year when I get in the project reports. So the county, they just we had contacted them about other stuff and they had said well we'll do patching and then we started continuing to talk about other things that they do for other communities across the county and crack filling was one and if we want to double or triple the amount of miles for crack filling they can do it more efficiently um, and as well as then mill and overlays small sections of road that are raveling that we don't want to do the entire road that we can tack on and save maybe a road that was paved a few years ago and has a soft spot that wasn't fixed correctly that is now raveling or cracked we can go back in and address that instead of just letting it go and fit in ruining the rest of the road so um, you know even little bits of money forty thousand dollars on the state highway uh, little by little will continue to chip away so and where you have patches that have been around since last winter, that's, is there a priority which towns they go to first? Uh, does Ripponoise have to be one of the later ones or? I don't know on that, Jeff, I can talk to them. We're kind of stepped into this program for the crack sailing the first part of the year. Um, and then they mentioned patching. Um, I don't know on that. I know they do their bigger projects first that they have and then they supplement this in for that. Now, if we, most of the patches we have that need to be done are to the side. So it, it shouldn't affect the traffic. Um, if we get something that's in a high traffic area, our staff can always go in and, and take care of that. Um, but I haven't seen that this year. Most of the stuff's been to the side. Um, or we do the manholes later in the year um, like we did up on Oshkosh, the one that I hit every single time, um, <laughs> and do that later in the year, and then they'll be in shortly. Yeah, I was just thinking the Pacific Oshkosh that that's been open since yep. January. Yeah, maybe. Yep, it and that's off I, to the side. So I guess we've always just hopped on with public works. I guess when you yeah. guys do your repairs, so that's why we yep. haven't done ours independently. We, we do the repairs for the water department on the patching and, and filling the gravel in on those spots. So, yep. But maybe as the relationship grows, maybe we move to the top. Well, they could rotate. I mean, they, I mean, do up on this year, you know, it could, I mean, if you yep. found there was a habit, we always do <laughs> walk on first, we always do candles quick. <laughs> well maybe you can put ripon in the rotation mm -hmm. it's not a big deal it's just i'm not even on the council but i get people complaining about i don't what takes so long and i go i don't know i said maybe i'll learn tonight and uh, but i realized trying to get all these moving parts it's not easy so i'm not i'm not complaining right anything. i'm just trying to understand. no i hear what you're saying and and we just need to have some patience on how we're uh, doing the work and make sure that um you know we're utilizing our people um where they need to be, hopping on and hopping off a project is a waste of time. Right. Stick with the project, finish it, and move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. 
Any other updates or reports? Sure, a couple okay. things. If you remember, we had some capital um, money to upgrade uh, City Hall from heating um, and air conditioning standpoint. Uh, we're getting closer to the end of that project. Um, they've run the wire. They did some, did a lot of that stuff. Now we're starting to see thermostats get in that actually have a uh, a little button on that you can turn compared to Adams that somebody took off and he couldn't touch it. It's been 74 in my office for. <laughs> uh, so we are yeah. uh, I'll move forward in in getting to the end of that. Most of the road work in the city is done. Uh, I just drove through uh, South Douglas. Um, the, um, the shouldering is done, so that is done. Um, Thorn Street's done. Um, Watertown and Woodside are completed. Um, we got a couple things uh, to, to talk to Kartechner about and, and have them take care of, um, but we are at the end of those projects. Um, what have the guys been working on throughout the year? The, probably four people have been working on catch basins for and manholes forever. Um, we're used to doing maybe on the high end 20 a year. Uh, they're up to 54. So our roads are uh, starting in our infrastructure underneath are starting to fail. Um, so why are we able to do um, so many? Um, I think there's been a lot of improvements and Chris can speak to this. Um, first of all, uh, you know, our staff, uh, we're happy with our staff. They're doing a great job. Um, the mini excavator has been uh, the, I've been told that's the best thing I've ever bought. Um, they can walk around it, they can get it done, uh, and get that out of their, the process. Um, we implemented some new uh, materials uh, that are lightweight, they're plastic, they glue together. Um, so you're able to create a base, um, and you're able to stack these up with caulking tubes, uh, not with the tubes themselves, but what's inside the tubes. Uh, stack them up, level where they need to be, and you're able to backfill the same day. Um, you could even possibly pave the same day. So uh, they're faster, they're more efficient, and, and things are a lot better um, in handling. They're safer also. They can lift them with basically one hand um, compared to where before we would have to uh, use hoisting material um, and things to get all these rings and, and uh, catch basin things in place. And we still have to do some of that. Um, but this reduces the risk to uh, safety of our employees. Jeremy? I guess I have a meeting tomorrow in the afternoon with SEH to discuss a number of things. Um, uh, number one, I guess, is uh, piloting well, possibly for next year or the year after. It kind of depends on their scheduling. Um, they have one guy who kind of goes around in a trailer and is able to, I guess, test pilot wells. Um, and then also we'll be talking about corrosion control treatment. Um, I kind of was hoping for an update, I guess, on the submission to the DNR, if they had heard anything back on that yet. And then revising our proposal for, for a proposal scope of services for um, SCADA and software upgrades. So I'll know more tomorrow, and those will likely be capital improvement uh, items as well, too. All right, um, any suggestions for our agenda items for the next meeting? Um, if I could just add, the recycling yard looks, continues to look very organized, well kept. I mean, nice job. I think it's always looked good, but I think it just even looks better. Oh, the compost site? Or the compost. Compost site, yeah. Um, you know, Chris took that over in 2018. 17, um, and they've made significant progress out there um, <coughs> on where we're at and how we're managing that. So, right. um, yeah, they've done a great job, and we're offloading a lot of the compost material um, on time, and we're recording the stuff we're supposed to for the DNR. 
Well, a big thank you to the staff. Um, they've been working very hard they all are. summer. They're everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to, I'm like, how many people work here? Um, <laughs> but they've been, they've been working hard and they're friendly. They wave. My kids appreciate that. So, um, and I know you guys got a shout out from, was it EAA? Somebody specifically mm -hmm. commented yep. on our infrastructure, so. I talked to them about that, and I always bring it forward and make sure they get their kudos. Yeah. Um, so that was very nice and unexpected. Yeah, so, um, all right. And next meeting will be set at some we'll point. We'll see. Huh? We'll see. Okay. All right, is there a motion <laughs> to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right, we are adjourned.